G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a video where I'm sort of returning to something I did a long time in the past, which was creating log files for running Dynamo scripts and then tracking them using something like Power BI. Now my original implementation was pretty basic. In this case, I was actually using almost no Python um, in order to generate a custom node for a package. And then in that case, generating separate Excel files mashing them all together in a separate script again, and then finally putting them into Power BI. Um, since then, I've learned a lot more about Python, how you can write CSV files natively, and also how you can get a lot of the properties of the documents, the scripts um, as they run, uh, in order to put this information together much more efficiently. So in this case, I'm gonna be using my custom package, um, Crumple, where I've actually built a node already that can do most of this. I just wanna show you how you can use it, and also how you can potentially merge your data together uh, to form a Power BI report to have a look at who's running your scripts, when they're running them, and which models they're doing it from. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so um, we're just gonna begin by opening an existing Dynamo script, um, and we're gonna add in a tracker to check that the script has has essentially run um, and write a log file. So if I open in this case um, a script, I'll just find an old one that I've used. Um, so this one modifies text case. Now I've already actually included the node in here. Um, this is actually from one of my beginner tutorials that I'll put on the screen right now. Um, but in this case, we're selecting some elements, changing their case. And then finally at the end, what I'm doing is adding a node from my package. So I'm gonna delete this and just explain how the node works. So in this case, under crumple um, script log, there's a create log uh, node, and it'll have a few things. So first of all, it has a trigger. Um, so this node won't run until data hits the trigger. So it's not gonna run every single time when you're testing or if you've frozen it. So it's really important that there's something in there that stops this running by default. You can also provide a directory name um, to the node. If you don't give it a directory name, it's gonna target your my documents folder. Um, and you can also add in a optional Boolean, which is false by default, to tell the node whether some errors might have occurred. So you might want to use things like is null nodes to detect if there's any true occurrences of those, those nulls. In this case, if you know you've got a null, you've probably got an error. So say somewhere here, you might want to add like an is null and then any true node, and that will tell you if there's some errors in your data. It's really important not only to track um, scripts that are running in your office, but also to track if they worked. Um, and the easiest way to detect that is to check if there are errors. So in this case, um, we also have just some outputs. So where was the log saved? What was the data? And was the log created successfully? Um, I've used a, a fair few functions in here to do this. I'm not gonna spend too long looking at this because probably a lot of people probably don't know how Python really works. Um, but in this case, uh, we're doing quite a few things. So we're checking the document title using the document manager. Uh, we're loading in um, some libraries for Dynamo. So in this case, the Dynamo Revit DS uh, space, and we're importing Dynamo to find out the name of our script itself. Um, we're doing some, some checks for the date and formatting the year, month, date format as well. So I'm not saving a raw date time. I'm saving a formatted date stamp, um, which I find is usually easier to work with and can be formatted later on either in Power BI or through Excel or through Dynamo itself. As well as this, I'm also getting the username and profile name of who's running the script on Windows. And then I'm using that to check the path to their My Documents folder. And I'm also checking if there is a valid path for the alternative path that can be provided. By default, that path is empty, which won't be a valid path. So that's how Dynamo knows to use your My Documents if you don't give it a valid directory path. At the end, I'm also just checking if the errors input is true or false, and then outputting true or false as a string. Um, rather than a Boolean so that we can just write this to text in a CSV file. Finally, at the end, um, I'm generating my log in principle. So I'm creating the name of the file plus the directory plus your username plus .csv. So it's a fixed name. Um, if you do want to modify this, that's fine, but I wouldn't recommend modifying my package because the next time you install that package, it's not going to be consistent. So you'd want to make this part of your own in-house in custom package for your company if that's how you want to use it. Um, finally, I just output some of the data, um, but I'm also writing a CSV file. And if that CSV file already exists, instead it's going to add to that file in that path instead. So you can essentially create a growing log of Dynamo script runs, assuming that the scripts contain this node uh, when you run it. So it's a much more straightforward approach um, in terms of deployment, uh, a more complicated approach in terms of how I've done it compared to my old approach, but it saves a lot more time, much more straightforward and much easier to deploy. So, 
let's say I'm going to run this. Now what I recommend doing is connecting the end to a trigger. You can optionally add errors or a directory name, um, but when you're running through Dynamo itself, I typically recommend freezing this node. So what this is going to do is when you're testing and playing around with your script, uh, the create log won't run. Uh, but when you go into Dynamo Player, frozen nodes naturally do still run when you run through Dynamo Player. So in that case, it's going to create the log only if the script is run through Dynamo Player itself. In big companies, typically this is how most scripts would be deployed and run. So I think it's quite suitable um, in this case to typically freeze the create log node. That way, if you're testing or playing around with these nodes, you don't have to worry about managing your users in each case. Now I'm just going to save this to my desktop just for easy access. And I'm going to close this script and Dynamo. And at the moment, I haven't given a directory path, so it's going to be writing to my documents. Now, I've already got a directory logger um, set up here as it is. If I just go to Notepad++ and I have a look at this file, at the moment it contains um, a row of data. So you can see that I've got the date time, uh, my, my user profile name, my script name, my project name, and in this case, false, because I didn't say any errors occurred. Um, I'm just going to delete, in this case, my log so it doesn't exist. I'm going to go to Dynamo Player. And let's just go to a view where we can validly run this script. I'm going to modify the inputs. And in this case, I'm just changing text case. So it's a pretty handy little script. Um, I do have a separate video on it if you want to see it. I'm just going to select elements I want to change. And in this case, um, I'm just going to isolate text notes as a category so they're all I see. I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to say they are uppercase and in this case they're not title case. I'll run my script. My script is done, but what's also happened is over in my documents has created this CSV log file. And I can see now that this log file contains all this information, including the date, who ran it, what the script is, all sorts of things you can look at in a program like Power BI. Um, and finally, if I run it again, in this case, I'll say lowercase and title. In this case, we can see we've modified our text notes. But if I go back to the document, I've got another row in this particular file. So it's tracking every time I run Dynamo. Um, it, it doesn't actually take you know too long to, to to create the log file. So typically you'll you'll get every single run of the script captured in here, which is great. So if I keep running four more times, you can see we've captured every single run. Now I do recommend making it uh, per user, and obviously that directory could be somewhere on a server, but it has to be somewhere that the user had had read write access for. That's really important. So in this case, that will be required for them to create and modify that CSV file. <coughs> but this is somewhere where hopefully the users aren't super aware it's happening, uh, but a BIM manager knows where to find these files so that they can work with them later on as raw files. Now, let's say we've got that file and maybe we've got one or two more users, um, you know, test one and test two. And let's say they've been generating various sets of data and you want to put it all together to look at it in one report in Power BI. Now you could look at all the CSV files using some more complex techniques, uh, but I just usually recommend jamming all the data together in one. And in this case, um, I'll just use a separate script. So I'm going to go back to Dynamo. Now I've already built the script, I just want to run through how the script works. It'll be on my GitHub as always as well, um, but rather than building through one node at a time, I think it's easier to look at this one just as it is. So I'm just building a script just to merge the files. So you wouldn't run this every single time, obviously. You'd run it when you want to. So I'm using Crumple in this case, my custom package. And I'm collecting the path to the user my documents folder. Now you could pick the path to the directory where all those files are stored. It's wherever they're stored. That's really what you're looking for. I'm converting that to a directory. And then I'm getting the directory contents. Now I'm filtering in this case by asterisk.csv. So I'm wildcarding. I'm filtering just so I see CSV files in this case. Um, you could add other things as well, like for example, Dynamo, because you know that that's at the front of the log files. Um, and you can, in this case, we're not including subdirectories. I'm importing all the CSV data, and I'm also transposing the data as well. So at this point, I'm going to just I'm just going to freeze my final node, and I'm going to run. And in this case, what I'm getting at the moment is I'm getting sublists of rows. So in this case, we can see we have uh, three files, each of which have um, a set of rows. In this case, they all have 10 rows, and each of those rows has five items. So what I'm doing then is flattening at level two, 
And this just puts all the rows at the same level because we're just flattening at level two. So if we have a look at this, what we've done is taken that level of the list and taken out the rest of the tree hierarchy. So now we're not looking really by file anymore, we're just looking by row. Now you might want to potentially clean the rows sometimes depending on how they've been formatted. Uh, for example, maybe if there's certain scripts you want to keep out of the results uh, based on a name, you could always do a check if the, if the set contains a particular name. In this case, I'm just keeping everything. And what I'm doing now is I'm writing a CSV file with the data for the file path. To create the file path, I'm taking the original directory that I was reading from, and I'm just adding to it um, two double forward slashes, which really represents one forward slash in string representation. And then I'm doing combined.csv. So I'm creating a new CSV file based on the combined output from these. So when I run this, I should end up with a new CSV file in the same location. And this one contains the com combined output of all of those CSV files. And this would be the master data report, which you could look at in Power BI. So it's a much more direct approach than what I used before. Um, I like it a lot more. Um, and, and I think it's gonna be much more straightforward to analyze results. So I hope that this is a useful technique. Um, that there, there are some more sophisticated ways to do this. For example, sending queries to databases like SQL or SQL. That's probably like the next step on top of what I've done here. Um, but in this case, I did just want to package this into a, something you can use in your office potentially. Um, feel free to use my code and replace the directory with something that suits your office and put it in another custom package if you like. Um, you're more than welcome to. A lot of the techniques I've used here, I found through lots of forum posts. I didn't necessarily find this all out through trial and error so by no means do I want to just own this node um, go crazy with it because it's great to see what your office is doing and as a BIM manager it'll help you sort of reinforce why Dynamo can save you a lot of time anyway if you're not already following and subscribing uh, feel free to do so and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos thanks take care bye